Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Techno Education Academy. In this video lecture, uh, we will discuss about what is pins, what are the applications of the pins, and uh, we will also derive the equation of heat flow through rectangular pin. First of all, what is pins? When the available surface is found insufficient to transfer the required quantity of heat with the available temperature drop and convective heat transfer coefficient at that time extended surfaces or fins are used. So the fins uh, uh, are used to increase the contact area or surface area okay, to improve the heat transfer rate. There are various applications of the fins. The finite surface are widely used in economizer of uh, steam power plants, radiators of automobiles, air cooled engine cylinder heads. It is also used in cooling uh, coils and condenser coils in the refrigeration and air conditioning system. Small capacity uh, compressor, electric motor bodies and transformer and electronics equipments. Okay, these are the various applications of the pins. Okay, here the pins are used to increase the contact area. Okay, and uh, it will uh, improve the heat transfer rates. In practice, uh, all kinds of shapes and uh, size of pins are employed. Uh, some common types of configurations are shown in practice. Uh, flat type pins, uh, tapered pins, uh, radial plate pins, disc pins, uh, pin fins and corrugated fins. Okay, there are various types of shapes you can use it. But in general or in common practice, okay, these are the configuration uh, of the fins we are using in uh, most of the applications. Uh, for the proper design of fins, the knowledge of what temperature distribution along the fin is necessary. In this uh, video lecture, the mathematical analysis for finding out the temperature distribution and heat flow from different types of fins is uh, deals with the following assumptions. The assumptions are made for the analysis of heat flow through the fin. The first assumption is the steady state heat conduction. Okay, here the uh, conduction it will be take place at steady state. Second assumption is no heat generation within the fin. Third assumption is uniform heat transfer coefficient over the entire surface of the fin. Okay, here the heat transfer coefficient h okay uh, it is constant or we can say uniform throughout the heat transfer the fourth assumption is homogeneous and isotropic fin material isotropic means uh, throughout the material the thermal conductivity does not change it will remain uniform the fifth assumption is negligible constant thermal resistance sixth assumption is Heat conduction is one dimensional. Okay, here the heat is transferring only one direction or one dimensional. And uh, last assumption is negligible radiation. Here we will neglect the effect of radiation. So these all are the assumptions. Okay, whenever we derive the equation of heat transfer from extended surfaces or we can say pins. So our objective is to derive the uh, heat transfer equation for rectangular pin. So first of all, here we will consider the rectangular fin, okay, which is uh, extruded from the wall surface. And uh, here we consider L, it is the length of the fin, or we can say it is the perpendicular to the surface from which uh, it is to be removed, where B is the width of the fin. Okay, it is parallel to the surface from which it is to be transferred or removed, where Y is the thickness of the pin and P is the perimeter of the pin. Here we are considering A is the cross section area. Okay, here the cross section of the pin is here you can see that B into Y. Okay, because here we are considering rectangular pin and our objective is to derive the equation of a transfer through rectangular pins. Uh, at the base, here you can see that this is the base of the pin. Okay, here the temperature at the base of the fin we are considering T suffix 0. Okay, this is the temperature at the base of the fin. T A, T suffix A, it is the temperature of the ambient 
temperature or we can say surrounding fluid temperature. K is the thermal conductivity of the material. Here we are considering uh, K is uniform throughout the heat transfer or constant. Where H is the heat transfer coefficient for convection. In order to determine the governing differential equation for the fins as shown in figure, consider the heat flow to and from an element dx thickness at a distance x from the base. Okay, we have already discussed this is the base of the fin. Here you can see that the fins are extended. Okay, so here the thickness at the base is 0 and uh, at x distance okay we are considering a small strip okay its thickness is dx so consider the heat flow to and from an element dx thickness at a distance x from the base and uh, at x distance we are considering a small strip uh, which thickness is dx so heat conduction into the element at plan x okay this is our plan x and uh, here the heat transfer uh, according to the law of conduction the conduction will follow Fourier law and according to the Fourier law Q equal to minus K dt by dx and here we are considering minus sign because it is transferred from higher to lower so it is continuously decreases okay with respect to heat transfer okay and A is the surface area which is perpendicular to the direction of heat flow and dt by dx it is called temperature gradient. So same as heat conducted out of the element at plan x plus dx. Okay, this is x plus dx. Okay, this is the initial uh, point for heat transfer. Heat conducted into the element at plan x, and the heat conducted out of the element at plan x plus dx. This is x plus dx. Okay, so uh, here we are considering small strip. Okay, it is highlighted with dark color. Okay, this is qx. Okay, it is the heat conducted into the element and this is Qx plus dx. Okay, it is heat conducted out of the element. Okay, at plan x plus dx. So, according to the Fourier law, Qx plus dx equal to minus k dt by dx. Okay, temperature gradient at uh, uh, x plus dx. It is called equation 1 and equation 2. Heat conducted out of the element between the plan x and x plus dx. Okay, here it is also transferred through the convection. Okay, here we will neglect the effect of radiation, but here we are considering the effect of conduction and convection. Okay, so heat convected out of the element between the plans x and x plus dx. Okay, and according to the uh, Newton law of cooling, Q equal to HA delta T, where H is the heat transfer coefficient for convection, A is the surface area. So, for convection, the surface area is perimeter multiplied by dx and uh, T minus T, it is the temperature difference. So, these are the three equations. We have already uh, derived it in previous slide. So, continue from previous slide. Applying an energy balance uh, equation okay, on the element, we can write down. Okay, Qx equal to Qx plus dx plus uh, Q convection. So, put the value of Qx, Qx plus dx and Q uh, convection. It transfer through convection. Okay, so we are getting uh, instead of Qx, uh, we are putting the value from equation 1, Qx plus dx. Uh, we again put the value from equation 2 and uh, Q convection. We put the value from equation 3. Okay, so we are getting this equation. So continue from equation 3. Making a Taylor expansion of the temperature gradient at x plus dx in terms of that at x. Okay, here our objective is to uh, expand the dt by dx uh, x plus dx according to the Taylor expansion series. Okay, so dt by dx x plus dx expansion is dt by dx uh, plus d by dx dt by dx into dx plus uh, d square by dx square into dt by dx uh, dx square by 2 factorial 3 factorial 4 factorial means infinite okay so this is the expansion of dt by dx x plus dx so substituting this value in equation 3 
okay this is the value of dt by dx x plus dx okay now we will put the value of dt by dx x plus dx into equation d so we are getting this equation so further we will simplify this equation so here you can see that okay dx it is a very small term because it is a strip of the fin it is a very small value and whenever we divide a large value so whenever we divide a small value by large value so it will become very small and it is near to zero so neglecting higher terms as dx tends to zero we have here you can see that two factorial three factorial all terms neglected here we are only considering first term so this term is remain as it is minus k a dt by dx minus k a dt by dx okay in this series here we are only considering this first two term this factorial uh, series we are neglected because it is tends to zero dx tends to zero so we are getting this equation here you can see that from left hand side and right hand side okay dt by dx into minus k a it is a common term so it is cancel out and uh, uh, in right hand side here you can see that this is a minus term whenever it is shifted from left hand side to right hand side so at that time it will become positive same as another term it is a positive term and uh, whenever it is shifted from right hand side to left hand side then it will become negative so here you can see that this is the simplification of this equation uh, this is minus so it will become plus term this is plus term it will become minus term it is equal to zero dividing both side by area multiplied by dx here you can see that in this term a and dx term is there in first term okay so divide both side by area cross section area multiplied by dx we are getting so here you can see that whenever we divide this equation by uh, area into dx so area area cancel dx cancel and uh, here uh, whenever we divide h divide by a into dx okay here dx term is there so it is cancel out so the remaining term is hp uh, divided by cross section area t minus t a equal to 0 we can also write down this equation in terms of d square t by dx square minus hp by k a t minus t a equal to 0 it is called equation 4 equation 4 is further simplified by transforming the depending variable by defining the temperature excess theta s so theta x equal to tx minus ta so at the ambient temperature is constant we get by differentiation d theta by dx equal to dt by dx here we are considering ambient temperature is constant so the derivation of constant is zero so d theta by dx equal to dt by dx now again uh, uh, derivation will be take place second order so d square theta by dx square equal to d, d square t by dx square thus uh, d square theta by dx square minus m square theta equal to zero so it is called equation five here m equal to under root hp by k a whenever we put the value m equal to under root uh, hp by k a and m square equal to uh, hp by k a so we are getting this equation equation 4 so here we are putting the values of d square theta by dx square equal to d square t by dx square here you can see that d square t by dx square equal to d square theta by dx square and uh, here we are considering m equal to under root sine of hp by k a so uh, m square equal to hp by k a so from equation 4 and 5 okay it will represent a general form of the energy equation for one dimensional heat dissipation from an extended surfaces or we can say fins the parameter m for a given fin is constant provide uh, the convective heat transfer coefficient h is constant over the whole surface and the thermal conductivity k is also constant within the temperature range considered okay here m is constant because uh, h heat transfer coefficient here we are considering constant perimeter is also constant k we are considering uniform and uh, cross section area is also uh, 
uh, constant. Okay, it does not change. Okay, so m is a constant. Then the general solution for this linear and homogeneous second order differential equation is of the form of theta equal to c1 e raised to mx plus c2 e raised to minus mx. Okay, so according to the fundamental of uh, mathematics, okay, it is the second order differential equation in the form of theta equal to c1 into e raised to mx plus c2 into e raised to minus mx. Or we know that theta equal to temperature difference T minus Ta equal to C1 into e raised to mx plus C2 into e raised to minus mx. Where C1 and C2 are the constant, these are to be determined by using proper boundary condition. Okay, you can calculate the value of C1 and C2. Okay, it is the constant by considering the boundary condition. For example, uh, one boundary condition is theta equal to theta 0 equal to T0 minus Ta. So here you can see that at the base, okay, base of the fin or root of the fin, okay, here the temperature is T0 minus T, okay, here we are considering the temperature is T0 and the ambient temperature is Ta, so the temperature difference is T0 minus Ta at x equal to 0, okay, whenever the thickness is 0. The other boundary condition depend on the physical situations. The following cases may be considered. Case 1. The fin is infinitely long and the temperature at the end of the fin is essentially that of the ambient surrounding fluid. Case 2. The end of the fin is insulated. Case 3. The fin is of finite length and the loss is hit by convection. Okay, so these are the different cases according to the boundary condition. We will discuss later on in next video. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope this content it will be helpful to you. If you would like to watch this type of more technical videos then please subscribe our channel and also share with your friends.